Hello, everyone. Welcome to Nails and Beauty Talk. I am your host, Asia the Bird. Today, we have a very special guest with us today. She's an illustrator. Please welcome Danae Bradley. Hello, Danae. Welcome to the show. Hi. <laughs> Hello. So I want to go ahead and get started with this interview by asking where are you originally from and how did you get started in the realm of art? Um, so I'm born and raised in Los Angeles, California. And um, as far as getting into art, I've always just kind of picked up a pencil and just kind of started doodling and stuff. Um, like, I mean, my mom still has like this bookmark I made since mm -hmm. I was maybe in like third grade. I drew a dinosaur or something. <laughs> But um, my inspiration later came down from like Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, a lot of anime. And I've just been drawing since then. And my mm -hmm. dad, he he's very artistic, too. And he used to draw as well. So I guess I, in a sense, I get it from him. So, yeah. Well, that's really, really cool. Like, who are like your favorite artists? Um, wow. Um, I would have to say like. Walt Disney I was that's like my huge number one inspiration like that's what really got me into wanting to draw more mm -hmm. and um you know then when social media came around of course you know you see other people you meet other people from different places of the world so like Loish I've discovered her mm -hmm. over the past few years she's become my favorite uh GDB art she is mm -hmm. amazing I freaking love her so much and she follows me so oh, that's really cool <laughs> so that's yeah I I got so excited when I realized that she followed me so yeah I would say those are basically my top three <laughs> yeah 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 GDB her stuff is really really cool yeah. I remember the time when I was in uh, art school I went to Savannah College Art and Design and we had this like assignment where we had to do like this written interview we had to reach out to artists and do this written interview and I remember a time I did this written interview for uh, GDB and, you know, she accepted and I interviewed her like it was like an assignment for college. So um, I thought that was a really cool experience to talk with her and get to know her wow. style. Her style is like very, very colorful. Yes. And I think that's why I gravitated to it a lot, because I like her how like her use of color. Mm -hmm. I love that so much, you know, just bright and vibrant. And not only that, it's like especially since she uses a lot of like POC characters and seeing a lot of POC in vibrant colors is right. really awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could definitely agree with that. But also to Leo, she, like she's popular. She got like, what, like a million or so followers. Yes. So everybody likes, everybody loves her artwork. Her artwork is really, really cool. Yeah, definitely. Like, like down to like her textures and how she like just shades and color. And it seems like she kind of almost has like a different style you know, mm -hmm. maybe depending on her mood on how much detail she wants to put on it. Right. And so I think that's pretty unique. And it like kind of make me want to try to go and try different styles. But I think I'm a little too stubborn at times to learn something new. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like some of the artists that I've got inspired by is Kirby Rosanes. He's an illustrator from the Philippines. Wow. Yeah. There's like another artist that does like these cool doodles. Um, his name is Matthias Adolfson okay. and he does like these cool, you know, fun doodles on his, like in his Moleskine book, in his like sketchbook. And yeah, you see a lot of artists that, that have their, you know, their different unique style, like Paul Lewin, he's a painter, you right. know, he's from Jamaica, but he lives in Miami and he does like these cool, like, like complimentary color type paintings and, you know, having that black representation consistently in his art. So I find that to be really cool. Right. Yeah, so now I want to get into your art style. How could you describe your art style? Um, my art style, I, I like, I don't know, like, <laughs> um, I never really had to describe my art style before, but I mean, I would say it's very influ influential with, um, from Disney and how they kind of have their art style in a sense mm -hmm. um but I think sometimes I try to add a little bit of realism in there not too much because I do kind of like I do like a cartoon style but not too cartoony so it's very in between in a sense and everything so yeah 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 I'm like a cartoony person so 
I'm not a realistic type of artist. So mm-hmm. I like, I'm very abstract. I like doing my own characters. So that that's really, really cool. Like, and I can relate to that because I'm not like a real, into realism, you know. Right, yeah. I appreciate people who can do realism. I think that yeah. takes a whole different type of skill. And I think like my parents put me in an art class once and I did have to like kind of study realism at a certain point. And, but mm-hmm. to me, it's kind of boring. I like to kind of exaggerate things a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the thing too, like in art school, I had to learn a lot with like the realistic artists, like, you know, Leonardo da Vinci and, mm-hmm. you know, all these other, other classical artists, especially from the Renaissance. And, you know, of course, it's, it's really interesting to see, you know, their art style and how realistic about proportions and, you know, perspective. And, you know, but you look at other artists like Keith Haring or Jean-Michel Basquiat, they had a style that was unique to them, very distinctive. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's kind of interesting, too, like with realism, like different like um, artists have their like different forms of realism, you know, right. as far as like body shape or how they did noses and stuff like that. So, which is really interesting of like how you can take realism in certain directions. Yeah, exactly. How could you describe the art scene in LA? Ooh, the art scene. I think it's very diverse um, or at least it's becoming more diverse. Um, I like uh, my brother is kind of more into that scene and he'll he'll like take me out to different like events and stuff because like he knows that I like to draw so he also knows his set of artists too um Mm -hmm. but like there's like a lot of graffiti artists um my brother showed me some pictures of some mural some murals that people have done in LA and just to see that you know there's different types of styles like and the, and of course a lot of people use vibrant colors I've been seeing that a lot and especially because we've gone through such kind of a depressing year with the Rona and stuff but, yeah, you know, yeah I feel yeah. like seeing a lot of artists use bright colors it's kind of heartwarming because it's like you know and people use art as a form of expression so mm-hmm. I think LA is definitely there's a definitely a variety of art yeah that's really really cool and you know like the thing you know bouncing off with the bright colors I think bright colors you know that brings that essence of joy and yeah. um, you know upliftment you know like how you could how you saying considering about like the, the pandemic and things like that you know yeah. it was kind of just sad and depressing but when you look at art or when things open back up it's like mm-hmm. everybody has that you know sense of joy right exactly so I definitely can agree with that. Now, in terms of your art business, so you used to do commissions. So how do you go about doing commissions for other people or for clients? Um, well, it's actually been a while since I've opened commissions. Um, but when, how I used to do it, um, I would just have people just send me a DM on Instagram. And uh, that's how I would answer a lot of like the requests that I would get. And then um, I would kind of, I would basically tell them right then and there how much it would cost. Mm -hmm. And at that time I was charging commissions, I would say I was charging very low for myself, but also to just the comparison of what my art looks now versus then, it totally makes sense. I think I was maybe charging like $15, maybe $20 or something like that at the time Mm -hmm. for just a, just a headshot. And it was all through DMs and then PayPal. I used PayPal at the time. Um, Mm -hmm. I didn't have any type of, I did have like some terms of use and stuff that I like, I'm not comfortable drawing what I'm not really good at and all that stuff. But I think if I were to open up commissions now and, and a part of me wants to, I've like talked to other art friends of mine and they have me look at their um, terms of like terms of service and stuff like that mm-hmm. and it's very detailed and I'm like I want to get like that and and being how I've been I've not been scammed but almost taken advantage of and so I want mm-hmm. to have those details so that it doesn't come bite me in the butt later 
you know what I'm saying? Right. So, and I think that's very important. So I've been trying to at least like make a document sheet and actually have my future clients like sign it, agree to all the terms and all that stuff, you know, very, I want to make it very professional. And I think back then when I used to do it, it was just, I was just starting out. So, <laughs> but yeah. 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 I could definitely um, understand. And I can relate a little bit because I've dealt with the time where I was, I was snubbed for my, for my work before. And the thing is, you know, you have people that will take advantage of you and, you know, i you know, my dad told me if people can take advantage of you, they will. Yeah. And, you know, and that's where, like how you're doing, you know, especially setting up prices and that's what I'm doing as well. So that way it is establishing like, okay, this is how I'm in charge. This is what this is. So it's establishing those boundaries. Exactly. Yeah. And I think those boundaries are very important too. And like, I have like on my YouTube channel, I have like commission stories that I, I laugh at now, but like, back then it was just so horrifying it was frustrating and I don't want to go through that again and I think like because Mm. of those like incidents I get very I guess intimidated about reopening my commissions again and I'm a very introverted person so yeah me too yeah so yeah just kind (laughs) of communicating with with other people and stuff it's kind of nerve-wracking to me a little bit Mm. but I really need to get out of that comfort zone again. So, and, and have faith in, you know, not only myself, but like people who genuinely really want to buy like a portrait or something from me. So. Yeah. 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 That, that's the thing. Now in terms of YouTube, what made you start a YouTube channel? Um, It was kind of like a mixture of boredom and I felt like I really needed to do something with my art when Mm. I first started it because I was just kind of drawing for myself. I was posting on Instagram um, and then I was like, I feel like I need to take a step further with my artwork because I really enjoy doing this Mm. and how can I go about putting it on YouTube and so I ended up downloading this free screen record program um, for my laptop that I was using at the time and so I would just record my progress and then um, just do voiceovers and I already knew how to edit and stuff beforehand Um, Mm. so all that was pretty much easy and common sense to me so um, I just felt like we like I just needed to put my like more of my art out there like you know social media is like always expanding and why not put it on YouTube why not put it on different platforms and stuff and I'm not expecting to instantly make big money off of YouTube Um, I think having that mindset can be kind of hurtful because then you end up quitting it's like oh I'm not getting enough followers I'm not getting enough subscribers um so I'm not going to do this anymore so I just kind of um just went in to it like this is fun you know I like how this video turned out and I can always look back at it too I like looking back at my artwork at stories that I've that I've told on there and stuff so that's always a plus yeah yeah that's kind of like with with me like because my parents encouraged me to do a YouTube channel and so where I've done like illustrations and I have this talk show. So like, yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool to put your work out there. And, you know, like how you said, you know, it's cool to kind of just put it in different platforms. Now with TikTok, I'm trying to get still acclimated and used to TikTok and posting on there because I'm so used to posting on Instagram. And I've had my right. like seven or so years. So it's like you got to get used to these new uh, platforms because it's like how you said, it's always evolving and there's so much new stuff coming out. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, definitely get on TikTok for sure. Cause that's like everybody's on it. Right. Everybody's and then too, it's like definitely made for the shorter versions of videos and stuff. But mm-hmm. um I, I think once you get into it, you'll you'll end up making it a habit and stuff. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, most definitely. And now they're doing like 10 minute videos, so you can release 10 minute videos what 10 minute videos the last I saw was like three (laughs) minutes now it's going to 10 which is 
it's not bad because I always thought like TikTok was kind of like it's kind of making people have a shorter attention span oh, right. so, like for for like a second I really was second thinking my YouTube channel like are people even watching YouTube anymore because you can just go to yeah. TikTok and get like the shorter form of information you know so huh 10 minutes in here. that's cool yeah, that's that's what um, my dad told me. And I was like, wow, they're making 10 minute videos. So now like TikTok's trying to be the brand new uh, YouTube. Right. <laughs> Basically, said, yeah. You know, I, don't, I don't I don't know. Next thing you know, they're going to make 20, 30 minute videos on TikTok. <laughs> they might. They might make it 15 just just to stretch it out yeah. a little bit. 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. You never know. Right. Dang. It'll probably put YouTube out of business. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, but I want to get into um, your favorite like mediums to do illustrations. Like what are like your favorite mediums and plus like programs to use? Oh, I'm, I'm really obsessed with digital art. Like I, um, you know, I'm not knocking traditional art at all because of mm -hmm. course that's, that's where I started doing before digital art was even a thing. But mm -hmm. I, digital art is my number one um, medium that I go to um, and I use Procreate and I, I, I really really enjoy Procreate. At first I used to use uh, Photoshop on my laptop uh, mm -hmm. because I've, I've worked with Photoshop since high school so mm -hmm. I've, I was already familiar with it and then too I kind of had like I had an older version of Photoshop before they did the whole subscription mm -hmm. the monthly f subscription payments um, right. so then I was like oh I don't want to pay for the new one and then procreate was out and it took me a while to actually not be cheap and to actually be nice to myself and get myself an ipad mm -hmm. to actually you know like actually draw comfortably on a nice new and it procreates like ten dollars so that's always a plus um but if i had to choose like another form of medium i would definitely just choose just regular pen, ink, um, pencil, and paper, pretty much. Um, I've, I'm slowly getting into watercolor. Mm. Um, so I'm trying to test the waters with some watercolors. So um, we'll see. There might be some videos on that once I get used to it. But we'll see. Mm. Yeah, I like wash and pen and ink. And I'm a digital person as well. So I use like Illustrator, especially the time I was in college. I, I use like Illustrator, Photoshop, and then once I left, um, I didn't use much of the Adobe Suite. But I'm I'm getting back into Illustrator because I've been using um, Affinity Designer, which is another graphic vector program, which is like a cheap alternative to Illustrator. And it's only like fifty bucks. You pay it one time, that's it. You got the program. So those are like my favorite like programs. So is Affinity and Illustrator, and especially Illustrator to do like repeat patterns. So that's really my favorite mediums. Oh, those are good. Illustrator, I like, I like it. Like, I, I understand the use of it and how easy it can be. But I think when I first learned it, I was taking a typography class. It's for, like, you know, creating logos and stuff. I hated mm. it. I can stand it. I didn't like working with it. But then I, I just randomly would see people just actually create art on Illustrator. I was like, that's freaking cool. I mm -hmm. wish I took a class on doing that and I probably would have joined Illustrator and started using that. Yeah. But yeah, it, it is it is a good program. I I don't know if I would use it. Um, but I but it's interesting to kind of see the process of what other people can do with it. Yeah, and the thing with Illustrator, the only tool that I don't like is the pen tool. I can yes. never I could never get the pen tool right. I'll use all the other tools, but not the pen tool. It's just, <laughs> no, absolutely not. Wow. How's gouache? How's using gouache? Because that's something that I've been kind of interested in learning. And I see a lot of people use it. Yeah, gouache is like a mixture of like acrylic and watercolor. So like, say, for instance, if you, if you paint a little bit, like on a certain area of, of your painting, and if you okay. want to expand it, you can add water and it'll just expand. So it's like, you know, it has that watercolor type effect. Oh, that sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. So it has that, that hybrid mix of acrylic and watercolor in a sense. 
Okay, so I need to put that on the list too. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, but it's a very it's a very fun medium. Now I want to get into in terms of like your illustration. So what is your whole process in terms of how do you go about like doing the illustration? Like what is like your whole process? Um, my whole process is most of the time I feel like the characters that I draw are really random. Mm. Um, it's just kind of like I always just start out with a circle for the head and then like I just kind of just go with the flow but if I'm really mm-hmm. stumped I'll go ahead and just jump on Pinterest and be like you know what are some inspirations what do I want them to wear what are some cute outfits I can kind of put together right um, what type of hairstyle do I want them to have and everything because I think I can like come up with like a face um, and maybe even like the body a little bit but as far as like clothes and hair like that's what I really need to like get my references for but sometimes you know facial expression can change based on like the clothes that I see that I you know based on the references that I that I found Mm -hmm. and or based on the hairstyle that I like like oh like she could be this type of character maybe she's like this badass type of character maybe she's this really sweet cute adorable looking character I don't know you know so Mm -hmm. um but yeah, I'll just start doing that. Um, I always do like my sketch first and then and then I'll add like the flat colors. But most artists I see, they'll do the sketch and then it's the line art and then it's like flat colors and then all the details. But I do my line art kind of last or in between because I'm not really confident in my line art. Mm-hmm. But... I'm trying to, you know, push myself to, like, do line art first. Only because, like, how, like, when I see other artists do that, it seems like it's an easier process to kind of place the colors and all that stuff. Right. Um, so, like, you know, I figured why not, I like, maybe try to make a coloring book where it kind of challenges me to only use line art. So that's my goal as of now is to kind of work on the line art but um but yeah I kind of like once I have the flat colors I like to shade in like the skin first I love working on the skin I like doing like the blush on the face like that's my favorite part Mm. and then um I I like doing the hair usually like that'll be next and the eyes and all that so that's kind of my process that's really, really cool. Now, what's your whole take in terms of the progression of art and where it's going? Um, what's my take on it? No, what's your perspective? Oh, uh, like just like my art personally? Um, not only that, but kind of like, you know, like stuff that's out now, like NFTs, you know, especially oh, like, things, like art, you know, where it's going now. Oh, I see. I see. I see. Uh, well, okay. As far as NFTs, I, I don't know how I feel about NFTs and I think it's because I don't really understand what the purpose is or what exactly I guess you know what's the point of it and I with little information that I've like looked into myself like you know it people say like oh it's it's a good thing for artists and artists should jump on it and stuff like that sell your work but it's for what like bitcoin it's within that range of Um, virtual money and there are some artists that have made millions of dollars on there and I was like oh that's cool you know but like everything else it's kind of like one in a million chance that if I jump on this am I gonna is it gonna happen for me too but then you hear the other side where it's like well nft is bad for the environment and all that stuff I was like oh okay so I don't know, really, as far as like NFTs, um, I never really gave it a thought. My brother mentioned it to me. He was like, you should do NFT. It's like, honestly, I don't even know. I don't know what to think about it. Um, as far, yeah, NFTs, I don't know how I feel about that. Um, what else is there? Um, I guess like as for as like TikTok, right? So I think TikTok is definitely good for artists. It can be good for artists, but at the same time, I Mm. think TikTok doesn't really like the stuff that some artists put out because I've 
a lot of my art friends like mm. their videos would get like taken down for like nudity or something but whatever they drew they were like fully clothed maybe like the character was very shapely mm -hmm. but there was nothing you know nude about them however right. they'll keep a video of some girl in her bikini you know I'm not bashing the girl in bikini but just TikTok's logic like right this is an this is an art piece somebody drew this mm -hmm. this goes against guidelines but the actual person that is probably worse than the art itself is still up you know mm -hmm. so there I think there's a hate a love-hate relationship with TikTok and artists mm -hmm. um but I mean I could see the po the positives because of the fact that it's short form mm -hmm. and I think short form videos have been good especially what Instagram reels have been doing too and I think mm -hmm. Instagram reels kind of helped me out personally um being that I guess they were so focused on promoting people who were using reels because they want to be like TikTok because TikTok is so popular right so I think that is definitely a stepping stone too for artists um and then I I've seen people try to make apps that are that are friendly for artists because you know Instagram usually gives artists a hard time mm. you know they don't really care for artwork um so there's like artful that I've seen and then there's another one but I can't think of it at the moment um and I know artists make discord you know chats for other artists to talk about their works in progress so uh, you know it's there's a lot for artists but I think sometimes social media or I guess the the type of app doesn't really boost artists in the way that it should you know so yeah I think there's a love-hate relationship there mm -hmm. but I think the com the community is so strong the art community itself is so strong that mm -hmm. I think we we like to lift and boost each other up and I see that a lot in the art community so that really helps too mm -hmm. yeah I can definitely agree with that because I what I like about art and where it's going you know it's more to it than just like traditional it's digital you can use any medium you want. You know, everybody's doing like, you know, ranging from digital art to doing pottery. You got right. does like needle, needle rugs, you know, so it's, it's art is universal. And that's what I like about art. And, you know, and because social media, everybody has a uh, individual and unique voice through their art. So I find that to be really, really cool um, with the whole art community. Now, in terms of like your art business, have you ever, have you ever thought about like doing your own t-shirts, doing your own merch for your, for your artwork? Yeah, I've, um, I've kind of just been mapping stuff out for myself and talking to some like family members that are, I guess, more knowledgeable about, you know, um, about going in the route of wanting to start a business, what I need to do, what I should do, what I should consider and stuff like that. Um, I would like to, it's just, I, I think like my mind right now, I think wants to be a perfectionist about it. Right. Um, and then to being that, like, you know, it's tax season and stuff. So like, I think like, I hate doing taxes who likes doing taxes. So it's kind of like, okay, if I start my business, how does the tax thing work you know right. and I think that's I think that's what's kind of scaring me a little bit um but I I know I have like the artwork to do it and I want to and I I know the resources like where I would get my stickers from um and how I would make and like any pins if I wanted to make pins like I have that information it's just the fact of like actually making it actually doing it mm -hmm. and stuff like that I think like the closest that I've done was um my family they had like um kind of like this event for people with small businesses mm -hmm. um held at like our family church mm -hmm. and basically like they're like Danae you should sell your artwork and I was like 
yeah, why not? You know, it's just like basically it's kind of like my first art booth that I had. And this happened last year. Mm. And, you know, I made stickers for the first time. I made like posters for the first time. And, you know, and I think I, you know, set a nice price for me at the time just to kind of see how things turn out, being that this was my first time doing this. Right. And it was a great turnout. It was better than what I expected. And I think ever since that happened, it did give me a boost of confidence. And so now I think I'm just trying to plan, but like trying not to be too much of a a perfectionist, but I can't help it. Um, But um, the only thing that I have right now is Redbubble. And because Redbubble, you just upload your work and they kind of do all the manufacturing stuff for you. They'll like, you just put what you want and then they'll make the hoodie or shirt or the sticker and they'll send it to the customer. Um, I just, I don't like their quality of stickers. <laughs> so I think like that's what makes me like, um, yeah, I really need to try to, you know, um, do this myself, you know, but in the meantime, mm-hmm. I'm just kind of relying on Redbubble to kind of do it for me until I figure out how I can do it for myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, most definitely. Now, what advice would you give for someone who wants to get into art? Um, just do it. Just take the leap. Honestly, uh, that's what I've always been taught. It's like, you know, you'll never know unless you try. Right. And if you don't like it, then maybe it's not for you. But if you really feel like art is something that you want to do, don't compare your artwork with anybody else's because then that's going to make you want to stop drawing and just give up. Like, I'll never be good. Um, you just you just got to keep going, keep doing you. But you got to have fun doing it. Right. That's the most important thing. And I know um, because social media has become big throughout the years, and I know a lot of people rely on social media. Um, a lot of kids want to be social media famous. You know, mm-hmm. that's like the big thing. And, and I think because of that, we compare ourselves to these big celebrities or these big artists and stuff like that. It's like, wow, like I want to be as good as them, you know, which is, good if you see them uh, like for inspirational purposes but if you don't beat yourself up about it Mm. because then you're that's you're just going to hurt yourself in the long run so but yeah just just do it pick up a pencil and start drawing see how you do and if you feel like like there's a bunch of youtube videos that are super helpful like social media is helpful overall so I mean, you don't need to take classes. You don't need to pay for classes because basically right. YouTube, YouTube is your free class. TikTok is your free class. You'll get lots of tips there. So that's, that's I think, that's the greatest thing about social media. Yeah, I definitely agree. The whole YouTube, Google University is pretty much at our disposal and it's, and it's all free. And you right. don't have to go to college and pay a lot of dollars to, to, learn, to learn art you know, and you can learn and develop your own art style. And that's the thing. And I wanted to get into, uh, and I like how you touched on mental health, because I think that's very, very important. And I think now, especially within our generation, you know, we look at TikTok, or when you look at Instagram, like a lot of us are talking about or being more vocal about mental health and how important it is to take care of yourself. And, you know, and the thing is, when you compare yourself to other people that leads you into, you know, taking the joy away from what you do. And, you know, with, with young people, some young people, like it gets them like depressed or they may have anxiety and things like that. So I think mental health is very important. And, you know, just, to, you know, like how you said, stay in your lane. It's, it's your race. You go at your own pace. And that's something that's very, very important. Self-care is very important. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. And too, I mean, like even like, I feel like no matter what age you are, you know, if there's some type of passion that you want to do, that you always wanted to do, just do it. Just right. do it. You only have one life, yep. you know, you're, and you're never, you're never too young to start drawing. You're never too old to start drawing. Like, I mean, 
take it up as a hobby if you want to. You don't always have to make a business out of it um, if you don't want to do that. Um, but mm-hmm. just always, just always have fun. Don't give yourself the extra stress over it. I think mm-hmm. it's it's not helpful at all. We've been through enough. You right. know? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, you can do it at any age. You know, it's never too late to start to start somewhere. Like everyone has their their own lane. Everyone has their story and everyone, you know, has their, you know, their start to what they want to do, you know, especially with an art, you know, and I see people in their 50s and 60s doing art and things like that. So, you know, it, it's really cool. You know, it, the art community is for any age. That's right. the cool thing about that. Now, how would you define success? Success, success is something that, that makes you happy anything that makes you happy it could be the smallest thing as far as like getting up from your bed you know Mm. and or just taking a walk um that could be a form of success it doesn't matter how big or how small um uh, success is defined differently for everyone um but I don't think it's like I honestly don't think it's you know oh you know have my I have a house, I have, I'm married, I have kids by the age of 30, you know, like, I mean, if that's your success, that's your success, but it's not everyone's success. Mm -hmm. Um, So, and I I think, I think even having the smallest successes um, is, would be very helpful for your mental health, because it's like, you know, you don't always have to strive super big, you know, like, if you've, had a bad week if you've been staying in bed um for the whole week and you decided to get up that was successful that that was a huge success and I think that's Mm -hmm. very important so yeah I would say um it doesn't matter how big how small (laughs) yeah yeah and I think the small things you know are the biggest can be the biggest accomplishments and I think it's easy to dismiss the small things you know, we worry about the big things like, you know, getting a trophy or a certificate and things like that. We don't celebrate those small goals that that we've accomplished or those taking those small steps right. into helping ourselves get better at what we do and especially in our life. So I think celebrating those small things is very, very important. Last but not least, where can people find you on social media and how can people support your work? Um, you can find me on Instagram at Daxani Art. Um, you can find me on YouTube and TikTok as Daxani Art as well. Those are basically like the main places where I post and everything. Um, yeah, and if you want to like purchase something, I have Redbubble, but I still need to update it with some <laughs> new artworks that I that I made. So yeah, just keep checking on there and yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Danae, for jumping onto the show. Your work is absolutely great. I love the digital work. I love the Black representation in your artwork. It's really, really fun, really, really colorful. Thank you so much for jumping onto the show. Thank you so much for having me. This is really exciting. So I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much. (laughs) You are most welcome. Take care. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to click the bell for notifications. Also, follow me on my social media platforms and visit my website, asiaticbird.com, and be on the lookout for more interviews to come very soon. Take care and stay beautiful.